Welcome to Mondays with Ryan, presented by the Sleeper app. That's Ryan Z. Hensley. I'm Grant L. Cohn. Uh, we're still in free agency. Things have died down a little bit, but the Niners have cap space. They restructured a bunch of contracts. They better not be done. So Ryan and I are going to talk about the next move they should make. But we're going to start with the next move they might make. Get excited, everyone. It sounds like the Niners might throw Robert Sala in the Jets. The last pick in the draft or something. A hamburger and fries for Zach Wilson and his contract. What do you think of the 49ers potentially taking on the Zach Wilson project? Well, let me preface it by saying I could definitely be wrong about quarterbacks. And I think it's happened before, obviously. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Zach Wilson comes to San Francisco and turns his career around, learns how to be a leader, learns how to get along with his teammates. But my instinct is hell no. Excuse me. Yeah. Heck no. Please do not do this. I don't think Zach Wilson has the mental makeup to be a leader and a quarterback in the NFL. And I think he's a little toxic. I think you saw that when his teammates were wearing the backup quarterback's name on T-shirts to show how much they disapproved of Zach Wilson. I'm not. I, Brock Purdy's the quarterback. To me, Zach Wilson has had plenty of opportunity to show what kind of quarterback he is. I think we know who he is at this point. I would rather the 49ers take a flyer on a rookie, draft him late, un undrafted free agent, find a rookie quarterback. You never know. You can find the next Brock Purdy. What I don't want to do is find Zach Wilson. I'm good. Okay, let's talk uh, stats for Zach Wilson. Yeah, This is a guy who, he's 24, so he's young. But he's also started 33 games which is, I mean, a lot more than Brock Purdy started. Yeah. So he's 12 and 21. Not great. His completion percentage is 57. Not great. He has 23 touchdown passes and 25 picks. And his sack percentage in the NFL is 10.2. So he's pretty much bad in every way a quarterback could be bad. Yes. Every way. I would yeah. say... Don't even sign him. No. No. I have a prediction. I, I don't think they're going to be able to trade this guy. I think this guy is, I mean, the Niners got a fourth for Trey Lance. The Steelers got a sixth for Justin Fields. The Pat, Pats got a sixth for Mac Jones. They're not getting anything for Zach Wilson. I don't understand. Zach Wilson has had so much opportunity, and he's shown us who you just read off the numbers. None of that is good. He's not a Horrific. good processor. He's not a good processor. Kyle Shannon wants a good processor. That's not what. Zach Wilson is good at. I don't get it. What is he good all. at? Not throwing. He has, Here's the thing. He has physical talents, kind of like Trey did. But what did they do with Trey? They got rid of him because they didn't want that distraction around Brock Purdy. Why would they bring in Zach Wilson, who would be another distraction behind Brock Purdy? And to me, I've seen enough from Zach Wilson. I know who he is. And the biggest problem with Zach Wilson is his mental makeup. He He's not a Talk about accountability. Me and you have a big thing when it comes to accountability within the 49ers locker room. We just want guys to admit when they're wrong so we know that they're going to fix those things, correct those things, and improve. Kyle Shanahan struggles with that. Zach Wilson struggles with that majorly. I think he had a horrible game offensively. Horrible. And they asked him about it. Is there anything you could have done better to win this game? And he said, no, I think we did fine. And that at, that was the moment when his team turned against him, started wearing Mike White T-shirts. <laughs> I, I don't like the mental makeup. You need a leader. Brock's a great leader. Zach Wilson is not a great leader. If you bring Zach Wilson on the team, it raises questions as to why you traded Trey Lance. Like, right. you, you made it seem with Trey Lance, like, look, we just don't have the bandwidth for, you know, a project at this point. We have our starting quarterback. We just need a backup who's ready to go. We, 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 we're not developing him anymore we got our guy sorry trey we'll send you somewhere that wants to develop you fine so now you're going to develop zach wilson because he needs a ton of development he sucks i'm sorry i to be that crude but he's he's i mean i like the way jesse puts it he calls him like a like a professional dunker trick shot guy in basketball or, yeah. or a dunk champion like he could he's the kind of guy who likes to pull up from half court but he has no layup no mid-range game no actual no actual bag but he's pulling up from three that's Zach Wilson. It doesn't make any sense. You, you, you're better off. He has played 10 times as many games. He started 10 times as many games as Trey Lance. Mm -hmm. And 49ers, some of the fans, the 49ers themselves were 
we're done, ready to move on. We're, we're done with Trey Lance. But then you're bringing a guy who's started 10 times as many games as Trey Lance to develop him when you weren't willing to do it with Trey. I think it would be a, a horrible mistake. I think it's, it's stupid. I think they did a great job finding Brock Purdy late in the draft. Try it again. Maybe you won't yeah. get the next Brock Purdy. But I would rather take a flyer on an unknown than continue to – give this guy opportunities when he's proven he's not willing to ready or able to step up to the occasion. Yeah. He's, he was fugazi. He was never, he never was. That was no. a bad pick during the pandemic. Um, yeah. But I mean, it, I'd like to think that the Niners are in the market for a, a backup quarterback. And I think what we're seeing a lot of, a lot of guys got signed or traded and it seems like teams are looking at the success rate of drafting quarterbacks. And it see, it seems like they're worse than ever. I mean, just a couple of years ago, every single quarterback that was drafted was terrible, except for Brock Purdy. All of them. Last and then years. just a couple of years ago, all those guys that won the first round, except for Trevor Lawrence, are not on their original teams. It's incredible. So yeah. I think a lot of teams are looking at like, look, man, geez, I don't know. These these players that college football has given us, let's just get Gardner Minshew. <laughs> let's get right. the next retread. I'd like to think the Niners are a little bit more confident that they're bypassing that market. They're not going to bring in another project. And they're going to actually try to follow the blueprint that led them to Brock Purdy in the first place. Here's the thing. Brock, Brandon Allen shouldn't be QB3. He should either be your QB2 or off the team. The 49ers need Brock Purdy, who is their guy. They figured that out. That's the guy they're rolling with, at least for the next couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. That's their QB1. Find a professional backup quarterback, somebody that's there to assist Brock Purdy and make Brock Purdy's life easier. And then every single year, have a QB3 that you draft and, and try to develop. And who knows, maybe you can find the next Brock Purdy or somebody that's better Brock Purdy, somebody that you could trade um, or somebody that could step in and be the next Brock Purdy for cheaper and you don't have to pay Brock Purdy. I'm not saying that's likely or that's going to happen, but that seems like the smart move. That seems like the way that they should be approaching this, not retreading with a guy who's been a proven dud in the NFL, which is Zach yeah. Wilson. And let's lay out what made Brock Purdy such a perfect fit for the 49ers. One, uh, wasn't really on other teams' radar because he's short and has a weak arm. So he's available. Two, he played a ton of football. It's like getting a veteran at 22 years old. He was ready to step in. Accurate. Mobile and, and could avoid sacks behind bad pass protection. Um, played in the Big 12. So he played Power 5 football, but he wasn't at a great team. So he was really like the best, like one of the best players on his team, and he had to carry it. Comes right. to the 49ers and has to do less. It's almost easier in the NFL for him. And he's a natural leader who has a ton of maturity. That's basically it. Did, did I miss anything? I think you nailed it. I think that's, you nailed that's Brock. It. And that's Brock. It, it, when you put it all together, it's it, it's it's a lot. Mobility. I, I'm not saying there's a bunch of people like that, but that's what you're looking for. As many of those boxes checked as possible. So I'm, you know, amateur scout over here. I'm over looking at quarterbacks who are going to be available on day three. And to his little brother, hmm. what about that guy? He played at Maryland for four years. He threw 1,400 passes in college, just like Purdy. He completed 67% of his throws in, in college, just like Purdy. He's quick, just like Purdy. Now he's like 5'10". I'm not saying he's going to be great, but for a Purdy backup, to his little brother might be nice. You'd probably be able to get him in round six or seven. That's a good thought, man. I didn't think about that yet. How how tall is Brock? You've seen Brock Purdy up close in person. Is he six one like they list him? Do you think? Um, he measured at the combine as six feet and one half inch, which is my height. So, I'll okay. say he's my height. When you stand, I next can't to call him, him short because I think like when I think of myself, I think of myself as like a, a tall, handsome man. Yeah. Well, so, I, I think that's probably true. As a quarterback, though, it's on the, it's it's on the smaller side. As a I like to think that I could have been a quarterback too. Maybe that's why people love Brock so much because it's like you know what. Maybe I could have done it. <laughs> yeah, I think it does. It, it is a little on the smaller side. Yeah, it relates to a lot right. of people. So to his little brother, who was your other guy that you had last week? Keaton yeah. Slovis. But here's my thing with Slovis. He was on three teams. He transferred twice. And I don't know about that. Like, also, he didn't have a very high completion percentage. What I like about to his little brother is he stayed in one place for four years, learned the offense as well as you could. Uh, and, I mean, Purdy wasn't transferring. It kind of shows maturity and leadership. <laughs> this is my yeah. team. Yeah. Um, he did transfer once. He started off at Alabama and left, but he was at Maryland for four years. Uh, and I believe Brock had a 67% completion percentage in college. 
I think. Yeah, I think that, and so that's did correct. so did to his little brother. The other thing oh. you need is that we didn't. I, I think that we didn't bring up is the mobility. That's yep. huge. For that's Brock, super especially, important, especially on this team. <laughs> you got to be yeah. able to avoid the free rushers. So yeah, I think yeah, that's Donald couldn't. Yeah, that's what they need to do. Uh, forget about yeah. Zach Wilson. Go find you uh, the closest thing you can to Brock Purdy. And the chance, I mean, you're not, you're probably going to fail. But guess what? You do it again next year and the year after that until you find that guy. Yeah. What you could do is get two. I mean, you could draft a guy in round seven and dra- assign an undrafted free agent and bring him to camp and just see what you got because it's so right. hard. So why don't you increase your odds and make a couple bets? Why not? It's an important position. Odds are the Niners are going to have to start a backup quarterback for a few games this year. I mean, not because anything against Brock. It's just the trend in the NFL. Backups play a lot. Quarterbacks yeah. get hurt all the time, and the Niners don't invest in pass protection. And wasn't it Bill Walsh who said you need to be drafting a quarterback every year? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. So yeah. listen to Bill Walsh. He knows what he's doing. He should draft one last year. Although, I don't even remember who was in the draft class last year. Not not many, not many good ones, that, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they rolled with Brandon and Darnold. I, to me, if Brandon Allen is, you're comfortable with Brandon Allen. He, and he feels like a, a lifelong backup. Like he's there to support Brock Purdy. One thing about Brandon Allen is I don't know if he's going to win you many games if he actually has to play, which scares me. No, a bit. I don't think yeah. so. I th- he's not a viable player. I have a theory as to why um, the hit rate on drafting quarterbacks has been so abysmal the last few years. Theory. Why? Okay. Okay. Think about the transfer portal. Kids are leaving school all the time. And as a coach, you don't know who's going to be there the next year. You're constantly teaching your scheme over to kids. Um, seems like it, you got to dumb down your offense. A lot of guys who are there for the first, you got to. You got to dumb down the reads. Like, it's, you know, this or check down. It's, a, it's too, re- like, are, how sophisticated are these offenses in college when there's a transfer portal and there's new players on the team every freaking year and you can't actually get any continuity? I mean, the thought. I mean, there's a theory. I mean, the the NIL agreement the, and the transfer portal are two major changes in college sports. So how's and, it affecting football? And how's it affecting football? Maybe we haven't yeah. seen the full effect yet because that might take a couple of years to actually uh, see the change occur. But yeah, you're right. right. Those are two major changes that have switched. You're constantly out. shuffling your roster. Like how sophisticated can your schemes be? And if it's really unsophisticated, then how prepared are they for the NFL? Because... You know, it's not just yeah. touchdown or check down reads in the NFL. Like you'll lose if you have two, two yeah. read progressions. You'll lose. And it has changed things. But for the record, I I support both of those moves because I want to empower these kids to, to yep. be able to make money and and decide what they want to do. So I think it's good. It's gonna be good, but we we don't know how it's affected the game overall yet. I think we're starting to see it. It's a good theory. I don't like college uh, sports at all. It just seems like. They call it amateurism, but they keep changing it, and it's so clearly professional sports. And it seems like these leagues, like the NFL, NBA, like just fund your own minor league. Now I know the NFL has the NBA has G League, but I don't know. Like, why does why does UCLA have to be a uh, a football minor league? Like, I, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, like you have to go to UCLA and pretend to be a student so you can become a professional. Fo- like, it doesn't make sense. Just well, go to follow- the minor leagues. Follow the money, right? UCLA, right. A, a huge amount of money they bring into that school. It comes from their football team. And so all the forces, the powers that be, want to continue making that money. So I Yeah, think but like, doesn't that money just stay in the, in the, in the sports? Uh, it doesn't go to like the English department. They actually, I don't know about the English department, but I know that there's a portion of it that they have to invest into the okay. school. They can't, can't go directly right. to the football program. I mean, most schools, especially your big schools, most of the money they make comes from the football program. Like they, yeah. a lot of the, the football programs fund the other sports programs in most cases. Football is everything yeah. in college sports, and, and the money is going to keep it there as, as, as long as the powers well, what's, what's, that be. Isn't it interesting, it. though, how it destroyed UCLA athletics? Not, no one cares. I went there. But I mean, UCLA athletics, like it's, it was like the original dynasty in college basketball, and they used yeah. to have Chip Kelly, but now, like, None of us alumni care enough to invest in NIL. Like, are you kidding? And now yeah. they just suck. And Chip I'm Kelly left to be an offensive coordinator. I was like, I can't. This is going to be bad. We're going to be really bad in yeah. the Big Ten. So, 
my brother-in-law played football at UCLA and I used to go down there and go to the Rose Bowl and watch all the games, get behind the scenes. And uh, it was good, man. That Who was the quarterback? Cade McNown. Oh, yeah. KJ Stokes was on that team. Uh, Jonathan Ogden was on that team. Um, it was a good time, man. And, cool. and they, used, they used to be very competitive back then, but it's changed quite a bit. Yeah. Now it's like you got that 90,000 people stadium, seat stadium for 25,000 people who are there. It's pathetic. It's kind of sad. That's enough UCLA discussion for now. Uh, all day, every day, Kemp says absolutely zero trust whatsoever in Kyle and John if Zach becomes a Niner. Trey should be livid if this happens. Gave up on him for Zach. I don't think he cares about the Niners anymore. Yeah, Zach I Wilson, don't know. I don't Zach know if people Wilson. realize Zach Wilson comes from a family that has like $500 million. I don't know if the hunger is there when you come from a family like that. Possible. Yeah, his uncle owns, owns? owns like, JetBlue. Yeah, yeah, decent. So, people, when he was coming out, people were saying, you know, yeah, you know, he's really arrogant. And, you know, he kind of carries himself like he's Aaron Rodgers, but if he's good, so did Rodgers. It's like, yeah, but what if he's terrible? What if he's just awful? I, I, so I lived in Utah. I don't know if people know this for four or five years in, in a city called Sandy, and right next to his Draper, where Zach Wilson grew up. I sold a Ooh. lot of houses there. I know a lot of people there, and there's, it kind of it kind of matches who Zach Wilson is. I'll put it that way. Oh wow, uh, Robert Sala should have called you up. Yeah, hit me up, man. Yeah, New York Draper, Utah to New York was just never a smart move. Ah, see, I see what you mean. Well, yeah. don't let uh, don't let the Niners think that bringing him out to Santa Clara is the move because it ain't. It's not. Dave Barclay says Grant, who started it all? Grant. Who started it all and the great Ryan G. Hensley? Oh, I thought you asked me a question. Give us some good news question. Can we have a strong room on offense anywhere? Yes, Niners don't make more moves with Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch, and Jed York and Cabo. Good to see you. They're just taking a break. They're going to come back and make, make more moves. Yeah. Yeah. Can we have a strong room on offense anywhere? I think we got a strong running back room. Uh, and I, love, I love you, Dave, by the way. They have a strong running back room. They got you know good receiver room um a good quarter well got a good quarterback not really a room yeah yeah it's too bad that like danny gray like they just got nothing there uh, but it'd be nice if they had like a young guy they were developing that they actually believed in maybe this year i think maybe they this, year. this year yeah yeah ralph zach wilson has been the arrogant overrated rich kid since byu not only does he suck at quarterback but he'll never fit in any kind of locker room I kind of agree sorry i know that's controversial i apologize but i agree it's, it's that fine but i think his biggest problem is that he's not good and if you go back and look at his uh, resume from college it was thin he didn't play that much he didn't throw a ton of passes and he had one really good year during the pandemic when he played a bunch of teams who were terrible his mental makeup is his problem and that's why he's not good and that's also why he's not a good leader he doesn't process well he gets flustered and when the chips are down, he's not the guy taking accountability. He's not Brock Purdy. He he's kind of like a blame it on everybody else kind of mm. guy. Yeah. Dave Barclay says, I feel I like Fields too. Much rather had him for backup. I'd rather have him, I'd rather have him over Zach Wilson too. But I don't think either one of those guys have shown that they're great processors yet. And that's not a good fit with Kyle Shanahan. Also, if they were to sign, trade for Zach Wilson, it would be such a distraction. Like it would be such a huge storyline. Zach yeah. Wilson. Like, who cares about backup quarterback? He's just there to blend in and then keep the thing, the, the, the train rolling for a month if he has to, or a week if he has to, like not to be controversial. I, I watched your dad and you have a show the other day, and you're if they trade for Zach Wilson, your dad's gonna be dead on the money. He said the backup quarterback is gonna be a big topic this offseason. And if it's yeah. Zach Wilson, Lowell, you are correct, sir, for sure. Yeah, he would overshadow in a lot of ways, Brock. Yeah. Because it'd be more interesting. Why are you here? What, what's going on with Zach? Yeah. Do you got a plan for Zach? Is he the next Steve Young? Like, how much do you like him, Kyle? All that kind of stuff. I feel like he might be. They might say he's the next Steve Young. They, they just might that say about, that. It, they said that about Darnold. And honestly, uh, he comes from, you know, he comes from Utah, played BYU. He's uh, mobile. He's just some more similarities there than Darnold. Neither one is the next Steve Young, but I think we could hear some hyperbolic statements like that. right because if 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 they thought darnold was the next steve young and they let him go and then they bring in zach wilson that would imply that they think zach wilson is better we were we were the wrong next steve young we were wrong this is the next steve young 
or, or the next I don't know. Patrick Mahomes? <laughs> Dan Marino? No. Don't do it. Brett Favre? I mean, it has to be better. I'm sorry. L- Lionel says, do you guys agree their most urgent need now is at free safety? No one is talking about Jair Brown and Hafunga being redundant. They're both really strong safeties, and Jair is better. That's a topic. Jair can play free safety, though. I don't know what they think. Aren't we, aren't, isn't this the topic? The most urgent need? No. No? Okay. Maybe it is. I don't know. Let me look at the topics real quick. Okay. Oh, yeah. We, it is uh, one of the yeah. topics. It's the next one. Yeah. So we'll get to you, Lionel. Sorry, I forgot. Dave Barclay says, I need help. I cannot become member to RJH channel from my phone. I know it's. I'm not tech savvy and I don't have a computer, but I need support, my guys. Just know I'm trying. Get your notifications up. Thank you, man. I think you can do it from a PC. I think it's easier. Sorry, Dave. I don't know how to do it. I'm also not tech savvy. MGM Productions. What's the deal with our backup tight end? Irv Smith Jr., 25 years old, got signed by the Chiefs one year, $1.3 million. He's good enough for Andy Reid, but not for Shaney. Shake my head. What's the deal? Point. Every time the, 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 the Chiefs make a move, it's like, oh, yeah, that was that makes sense. Yeah, the 49ers are... The, here's the thing is Latu didn't... Latu looked good into me in training camp from like size, get open, but he just dropped every single ball that was passed to him. Um, Braden Willis looks good in his pads too. Maybe they believe in in Willis and La too, but I know they were. But when you say he Tyrant. dropped every pass that went to him, like that's not an overstatement. <laughs> not, I'm like, it was crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, and maybe he had every his, opportunity to make that team, and he was like, no, 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 no. no. I'm gonna make sure I don't. Maybe he had the yips. Maybe he'll get get through it. Maybe the just the pressure of being in the NFL got to him. Sure. He'll yeah. mature. Training camp, a lot of pressure. It doesn't get any more pressure than that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to be positive. I know. Me too. I, I, I don't know. Maybe Willis and Latu will step up, but I think there is interest from the 49ers and tight ends in this draft, as well as uh, there's been rumors in free agency. So they know that they need a tight end too and an eventual replacement for Kittle at some point. So they might get one this year, another one. Sure. All right. So we talked about the next move the Niners might make. What's the next What's the next move the Niners should make? They still have a plenty of cap space. They just created it. There's a lot of free agents available. They could make trades. What yeah. do you think? I'm on deck with uh, my guy, my good friend, Charvarius Ward. <laughs> um, he he tweeted out. Did you see what he tweeted out? Mm-hmm. He said him and Tredavious White have the same agent. Wanted to know if the 49ers wanted to have uh 49ers fans wanted him on the team he said basically he's saying he can make it happen i think that would be a great move i, I know we're going to talk about weakest position in a minute but i do believe one of them is that third corner spot and bringing in tradavius white along with the amador lenore and charveris ward even though i know he's coming off an injury i he still is. think i still think it's a killer yeah and for corner that's important yeah. But today, today's medicine. If he's half the guy he was before, or not half, but if he can be eighty percent of the guy, he was good, man. So that could be a move. I mean, they tried or, it with Richard Sherman, right? And they had, I mean, they went to the Super Bowl. Richard Sherman. He wasn't quite what he used to be, but he was. He went to Pro Bowl that year, yeah. uh, maybe on a one year deal. Tre'Davious yeah. White. That sounds cool. That's one of them. The other one I yeah. got would be the other position of weakness. I think on the defense, which is free safety. Bringing in Justin Simmons, yeah, is a possible fix there. I'd like to see one of those two moves. I like those a lot. Um, I would like to go offense at some point though, and I know yeah. it's a great offense and all their starters are coming back, but I keep going to the old tight end. He's not even that old, Logan Thomas. I feel like he's solid. He's better than Ross Dwelly. He's better than who's their backup tight end? I don't even know. Willis. And Willis, he's better than that. I give him a one year deal. You probably get him for a million dollars. He caught 55 passes last year at four touchdowns. It Ooh. would be nice if they were aggressive offensively in free agency. They haven't yet. I, they haven't no. signed one, one, one player. They've retained some players, but they haven't brought anybody new on the offense yet. And I think we're going to talk about why, why that is soon. But yeah, it's, I think. I, I think that's a good move. They need a tight end too. I can imagine how good this offense would look if they had a uh, actual tight end too. And maybe the answer is putting juice out there more. I, I don't know what it is, but I feel like that is a good move. And I, I like that you brought that up. 
but it feels like this is the year that where they go in the draft for the offense. And yeah, so I can I see it. What, yeah, I just feel you can just bring this dude to camp. I mean, I don't know. He he only averaged nine yards a catch. Maybe he's slow. Maybe he's tired. But he had fifty five catches, and Juice had nine. What fourteen? He's a better receiver than Juice. Yeah. They don't the use like how do they use Juice as a receiver? Like they try to they'll throw it to him once a game every other game, and they try to get you like completely to forget about him, and then he's wide open because it's some play action pass and look like he was blocking, but then he's running for like he's the only guy who can do that. You don't have him running option routes, beating man coverage. You never ask him to do that. Right. The, the thing is, the thing as a fan that makes me feel good is the 49ers definitely see tied into as a huge need. They yeah. drafted two of them last year in the same draft, which is kind of rare. And I, they might draft one this year. So the tight end, the 49ers see tight end two is a, is a big need on this team. So yeah, but tight end two for them. Most of the time, it's a blocker. It's a blocker. Yeah. Like, I, to me, what they felt is like they probably, I bet you, they wanted to bring back Charlie Warner. And he got that ridiculous $12 million contract from Atlanta f- for God knows yeah. what reason. Does he even have 12 catches in his career? I don't know. But he got it. And the Niners yeah. were like, okay, we're not going to, okay, you could go. But we'll just get another blocking tight. It could be Latu. Or it could be, I bet you, they just draft another blocking tight end. Relatively course, high. Can't wait. It, it, the thing that's frustrating, like I, Kyle's offense is it's really good at a lot of things. He dials up wide open receivers. His run game is great. One of the things that frustrates me so much with Kyle Shannon's offense is the way he uses his tight ends. Yeah. George Kittle is so damn talented. Yeah. His, his stats could be so much better than they are if Kyle was. Can you imagine if he were on the Chiefs instead of Travis Kelsey? I put it out there, and people were mad at me, a lot of Chiefs fans. I said, I think George Kittle is just as talented as Travis Kelsey. Maybe not hands, but everything everything besides hands, I think George Kittle is just as talented, if not more talented than Travis Kelsey. He's just in the offense that features him where Kittle is a, a glorified right tackle, swing tackle on the 49ers. Let me ask you this. If Travis Kelsey were on the Niners instead of George Kittle, would Kyle Shanahan know what to do with him, or would he be down on him because he doesn't block well enough? B. Duh. No, that's <laughs> yeah. to me, that's the problem with Kyle. It's like, yeah, you're a good coach. You're a really good offensive coach, but you're looking for specific types of players to, to fit specific roles. And if you were to get someone who's unique, like Travis Kelsey, would you even want him? Let's back up then. Or like, the, like Kittle, freaking Kittle. I'm trying to understand where this comes from. Do you remember how they used, because Sharp was amazing. He was on the Broncos for his dad, right? It wasn't that's Sharp right. on. And, and they Sharp. used him in the passing game more than absolutely. Him. And he wasn't so, a particularly great blocker. He was he was kind of small. He was like a big wide receiver. So where does this come from with Kyle? Because usually it's like a clone of what his dad did, but in this case it seems to be different. He's using them mostly as blockers. It's so strange considering how much money they're spending on George Kittle. Right. Right. Yeah. Use George. Man, yeah. George Kittle's only got a couple years left, man. Use him while you got him. That would, I would love imagine to see like that. how dangerous the Niners would be if they had a guy who was a legit threat in a in the passing game as a number two tight end. Why does everyone have to be? Why, why does the number one skill that everyone brings to the table on offense have to be about the running game? Why? Jimmy's not the quarterback anymore. Right. You, you got just the got the like. What did he just set the record? The, the single season record for passing yards for a 49ers quarterback. He just did that, right? Right. 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 Okay. So what are we doing? It's 2024. Yeah. <laughs> What are you waiting for? You got Brock Purdy. You got Brandon Ayuk. When are you going to invest in the people that actually help those two guys? You know, the thing about Brock Purdy, which is different, I think the numbers are a little skewed on Brock Purdy's passing attempts. I feel like Brock Purdy passed more this year than we've seen with Jimmy. But they blew so many teams out in the fourth quarter. They're just running the clock. So I think they did turn up the passing attempts a little with Brock Purdy, but I would like to see it even more. What's that Kobe commercial? More. Like, I want to I mean, see yeah, more. you should be. It's great that you can beat teams running the ball, but I think you can also beat teams passing the ball, and you should be able to be. I mean, you should be able to look. If you're going to give Brandon Ayuk 25 plus million dollars a year and then Brock Purdy 50 plus million a year, maybe give them some pass protection so they can like really flourish as opposed to, yeah, spending all that money and still saying, yeah, well, we got it. We're going to run the ball first. Cool. 
Yeah. I think we're going to talk about pass protection, but yeah, we that's will. a big one for me. Okay. Let's pause and check out some sleeper picks for tonight's Warriors game. Yes, sir. Because I still haven't gotten anyone, any, any of these right. And Ryan's good. He's sensible. I think we lost Let's, last week, though. No. Yeah. Well, it's because we did it together. Because Draymond didn't hit a three. Yeah. I guess it's foolish to bank on that. Let's try to be <laughs> sensible here. Let's All try right. to make some sensible sleeper picks. Yeah. So it's Warriors and Knicks. And we got Wiggins, Kaminga, Curry, Draymond, and Pods. And we got to pick one Nick. It's at home, though, right? Let's double check. Because that's a big yes. difference. Tonight. Yeah. Because yeah. Steph Curry in, in Madison Square Garden is a maniac. Yeah. Over on everything. But it's at home. So yeah, we gotta we gotta dig in there. Um, okay, let's let's start with Steph, man. What are the options for Steph? Twenty six point five points, uh, four and a half threes, four and a half rebounds, two and a half turnovers, four and a half assists. I'm just um, going over on the points. I think Steph's simple. gonna be twenty six and a half. Here's what he's done the last five games. He got thirty one last game. Yeah, it's time to lock in. <laughs> okay, let's go, Steph. Uh, hey, really, really though, that's real talk. They're getting close to playoff time. There's tied for the in ninth place. Steph's gonna have to put this team on his shoulders and carry himself. So here I'm we go. With that one. Yeah. Kaminga, seventeen Kaminga. and a half points, half a three, five and a half rebounds, two and a half assists, half a steal, half a block. Let's look at Draymond. Okay, Draymond, six and a half Steph assists. Is- six- Steph is back. Let's do assists. Assists. Let's see what he did. Oh, 13 last game. Yeah. Steph came back. Assists went up. I'm going to go over. Again. See, that's a savvy move. That's why I let Ryan make my picks for me. Okay. Pods. We should. That's a good guy to go less on because now his role becomes reduced with Steph back. Yeah. What is that? Three and a half. That's assists. Assists. What's his points at? Probably five and a half, I'm guessing. Mm-mm, nine and a half. Oh, I, I would. I think I'll go under there. Yeah, I agree with that. And why don't we do one Nick? Okay. Brunson? Brunson Steven is, Chenzo? Brunson has been going ape shiz. Ape um, shiz. I, yeah, he's, Ooh, he has. He's I come out of nowhere, man. Made himself an all-star this year. Look at those 45, 42, over yeah. 30 today. I'm going to say yeah. yes. Yeah. Cool. Lock it in. View the entry. That's what we're going with right there. 10 bucks to make 120. Submit the entry. Those are the picks. All right. I'll uh, tweet it out later. Let's see if we can get this one right. I feel good about it. I do too. I feel really good about it. Okay. Thank you, Sleeper. All right. Thank you, Sleeper, for sponsoring our show. Okay. The Niners came into this off season with a clear goal. Revamp this defense. It did not live up to expectations. Fine. New defensive coordinator. Uh, half the D-line's new. New linebacker. New corner. Fine. What are the expectations now for the 2024 49ers defense? Before I answer that, what? let me clarify. When you say what are the expectations, whose expectations? Yours, mine, the Niners, the, the NFL. How do you yeah, what are the Niners' expectations for it? And what are our expectations? I guess that's a great question. Let's start with the Niners' expectations. You were dissatisfied with the coaching and the personnel. You make all these changes. You bring in these guys. You get rid of Eric Armstead. Uh, are you expecting a decidedly better defense? Is that your expect a better defense than a defense that gave up 17 and a half points per game? I think that should be their expectations. Otherwise, why did you get rid of Wilkes? Why'd you get rid of Armstead? Obviously, you think these moves will make you better. You brought in Brandon Staley as a defensive guru. So their expectations probably are that they get back to being the top three defense in the NFL with this talent around them. So I imagine that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, they were eighth in yards allowed, but the crazy thing is they were third in points allowed. And 17.5 points per game, I guess, isn't good enough for the 49ers, but it's pretty freaking good. So if that's the expectation, then Nick Sorensen has a high bar. Uh, yeah. he better not have any type of rookie mistakes. He needs to be ready to go. Him and the Brandon Staley combination. Otherwise, what's to stop him from getting fired after one year if the Niners don't win the Super Bowl? 
And it seemed like a lot of the team was out on Wilkes because they weren't, he wasn't doing what they do, right? Like, like this is what we do, right? Well, Sorensen's been here a, a long time. So uh, there's really no reason to, for the team not to be in on Sorensen, who's been here for a long time, knows what they do, right? So he sh they should have the team behind them. The biggest problem with the 49ers has been third down. Mm. You know, the year before, even with uh, D'Amico, they were bad at stopping the run on third and short. Well, last year, they were bad at stopping the run in general, especially third and short. They're also bad at stopping third down, even in pass. So I, I imagine the 49ers' expectations this year is that they improve on third down, which will in turn make them overall better and, and back up to the top three where they should be with this roster. I would expect that their pass rush will be better this year. Leonard Floyd's a nice addition. I like that signing. He's a better, He's a better player than rush. Chase Young, who's still a free agent. Have you noticed that? No one signed Chase Young. I thought Chase Young went somewhere. No? Did he? I, yeah, I don't have a mark down yet. I thought he did. I didn't hear. I've been waiting for I, I I can't wait to hear, like, the fool. <laughs> I pity the fool that signs Chase Young. Like, what did you see in his tape with the Niners that makes you want to? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. He, but I, I thought mean, he was still a free. Anyway, my point is that Leonard he doesn't have the F or... Um, yeah, just rumors. Yeah, he's still okay. not with the team. Just rumors. rumors. Well, it's my point fun. is that Leonard Floyd's a much better pass rusher than Chase yeah. Young, Randy Gregory, whatever the Niners had last year. He's a big upgrade, and I think that their pass rush should be back uh, to being one of the better pass rushes in the league. Even I without agree. Armstead. I agree. I actually looked at by position group, and that's the only position on the whole entire 49ers roster I think most of the most of their positions are are the same talent level. Yeah. I think they're about the same, but defensive end is the only position I have on the 49ers improving. And I think you're right. I think Leonard Floyd's going to be much better. He's got a motor. Chase Young did not have a he had the opposite of a motor. Yeah. Right? Leonard Floyd has that motor. He's going to give you that effort. And then I think Yatur Gross Matos is actually a, a a lot of untapped talent there too. So overall they lost Chase Young and uh What's his name? Kinlaw, Armstead, Gregory, Cleveland Farrell. But you come Farrell. back with those other four. Yeah. So the my, Farrell, they come back with your turn, Leonard. I think that's an upgrade. My question is, have they really upgraded their run defense? They cut Armstead, lost Kinlaw. You know, Jordan Elliott's supposed to be a good run defender. You turn Gross Matos supposed to be a good run defender. How much are they going to play? You signed Devondre Campbell. He's had two really bad years in a row with Green Bay. Um I mean, Greenlaw was really struggling last year before he went down because he was hurt like the whole season. Have they improved their run defense? I don't know. I think they have. They're as good, if not better, against the run with these guys than they were with Armstead. The key is they did it for cheaper. It's kind of like you go from McGlinchey to McKivitz, but it's cheaper, right? I feel like that's what they're, they've done now. They replaced Armstead with two players. And those two players cost about the same what Armstead would have cost him by himself. Armstead has not been healthy. He's not been who he was in the past. His, his foot has been bothering him, you could tell. Armstead's a good player. Shout out to him. But if you look at the statistics of Jordan Elliott, Malik Collins, not that different from what Eric Armstead's produced. And you're getting it for a two-for-one deal. My question with Malik Collins is why didn't the Texans want him and why didn't they get more for him? That's a good question. I don't know the answer. To I mean, that we can say the same thing about Armstead, but like yeah. I can tell right. you exactly why the Niners didn't want Armstead. With with Collins, he plays, he's durable. Right. They gave he him an extension, money. and then all of a sudden they don't want him anymore. Like why? And yeah. all he got was a seventh round pick for him. Like why? When I watch him, he looks like a good player, man. And you look at his statistics, not bad. Jordan Elliott definitely. Jordan Elliott's statistics are just as good, if not better, than Eric Armstead's. So. I don't know, man. I feel like they are going to be better at stopping the run. I'm hopeful because that's been the biggest problem. When you looked at the 49ers after this season, if you look at the two problems that they had, one is the right side of the offensive line did not do a good job uh, in pass protection or even in the run game. They also blew a lot of protections, which also falls back on that offensive line. But then when you look at the defensive side, the biggest problem was stopping the run. They got eight up. They gave up the most rushing yards in the playoffs. Out of every team in the playoffs, the 49ers gave up the most rushing yards. It is a huge problem for the 49ers. They got to address it. 
I think Collins is going to be fine. I think Elliot is going to be an improvement. Now, is it that big improvement that you probably wanted? You know, Mike Silver was reporting a big splash. Did the 49ers get that? No, they haven't got that yet. But we'll see, man. Maybe maybe they are that much better. I, I'm not sure, but it's a big problem. Maybe they're going to ditch the wide nine. I don't think they will. My, my, my question with Collins, I haven't seen a ton of him. I didn't even know who he was when they traded for him, but I've been trying to familiarize myself. He's 6'2", 310. Hargrave is 6'2", 305. I mean, they're both a little small for me in a, in a wide nine because, I mean, you saw Hargrave. He kind of got engulfed by those double teams. Is Collins going to be any better? Armstead was freaking huge, and yeah. he could hold up to that stuff. I don't know that uh, Collins can. Now, Elliott's a little bit bigger. That's why they got him. But if you have a starting D-line of Bosa, Hargrave, Collins, and Floyd, I guess just begging you to run the ball. So what are they going to do? Are they going to start Elliott and Gross Matos? In yeah. which case, how's your pass rush? Like, Sorensen's got some decisions to make. I when, when it comes to defensive tackle, and I could be completely wrong, but I feel like your weight and your strength your arm length is much more important than height. Actually, it could be an advantage in a way because you're able to get lower and get leverage. Um, so may, maybe that, I mean, I, that was the thing. I always thought it was a little weird having a six foot eight defensive tackle, to be honest. Like, it's hard for Eric Arms. He's a big, strong guy and he was able to hold his own and take on double teams. But was mm -hmm. he able to get low and get leverage and get penetration into the backfield? Not that often. I, not I really. Was, not really. And no. so it it almost seems like it's a disadvantage. He get pushed back, but he wouldn't get like penetration like that. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So maybe these guys can get low, get a, get after. I've seen clips of Jordan Elliott. I've seen clips of Malik Collins that were very encouraging, like high motor guys that get low and, and get after it. So maybe it will be that improvement. Yeah, maybe. I, I I guess I don't have the stat with me. I thought I saw a stat last year that the Niners run defense was uh, dramatically better with Armstead on the field than without him. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see if they really can replace that and improve with the well, guys I mean, that, that they got. Sense. It makes sense because after that it was Kinlaw. No offense to Kinlaw and congratulations on him getting the contract, but Armstead's better than Kinlaw. That doesn't mean that true. Armstead is true necessary to stop the and run. Kinlaw and Givens both really struggled against the run. Yeah. And those double teams. I think Kinlaw had a tough time. I, I don't want to speak for him. I thought he had a tough time anchoring. Um because you know he was one of his knees wasn't quite. It's hard to get low when you have knees. It's issues. hard to get low. Yeah, yeah, I would have to say. And I would okay. not be surprised if the 49ers grab a defensive tackle in this draft. I wouldn't be surprised either. Yeah. What's the weakest position on the Niners' defense right now that they've really overhauled? I think it's revamped. I think it's Ambry. Like I, I know a lot of people. Um, no, I'm saying position group. Weakest position. On the defense, well, yeah, I think it's your oh, looking at the whole position. There's yeah. one specific position this week, like the cornerbacks, the DBs in general for the 49ers are good. Deion mm -hmm. Lenore, Charvarius Ward, very good, but after mm -hmm. that, it's a big drop mm -hmm. off. So I don't know if it's the weakest position group. Well, what do you what do you think of Isaac Yadam? Uh, he seems okay. Uh, I got to see a lot more. I think he's he can play nickel. Um, I, I don't know. I know. Here's what I do know. I think Yamato Lenore doesn't want to play nickel. I've hmm. heard those. I've heard those rumblings. Yamato Lenore wants to be an outside corner. You know why? More money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think a lot of people are going to say safety, but I really, I'm a big Huff guy. I, I love what Huff gives you. We'll see what how, how he looks coming off of an injury. And Brown was very encouraging. I expect Brown to be better than he was last year but they're very similar and you probably still need a free safety but those two guys give me confidence i just i, I like how yeah but that third corner spot to me is the biggest gap that needs to be filled still on the entire team all right i'm going a different direction here i think their linebacker position is hurting fred warner is as consistent as it gets he's great no questions there after him, what do they got? Devondre Campbell, who's old and hasn't been good in two, three years. Um, Demetrius Flanagan fouls and a couple guys who didn't play last year. That's it. Dre Greenlaw will come back, but 
what's he going to be? He was great two years ago. He was phenomenal two years ago. Last year, he looked, he was limping around the field the entire year, and then he got hurt. I think that was another big reason the Niners run defense wasn't what it was the year before, even though it was all Steve Wilkes' fault. But now, what do you, oh, I don't know what to expect from Dre because of all the players in the defense, he was the one that needed to be fast and violent and all that. And yeah. um, the last linebacker on the Niners I saw tear their Achilles and try to come back was Bowman. And that didn't work out very well. So I know Greenlaw's younger, but I think that this is a huge issue. I don't think Campbell's an answer. It wasn't their first choice. Um, their first choice is Greenlaw pre, pre-injury. pre Second choice was Kendricks. Third choice is Campbell. They got to draft at least one guy. I know they drafted D. Winters and Jalen Graham last year, but those were late picks. I think they need an early-ish pick on a linebacker. There's a guy named Gray, I believe, from Penn State, who seems to be available often in these mock drafts. Who's... Who, who might be a, an answer there. Okay. But here's the thing. with I've actually been saying this for two years now, three years. When it comes to the 49ers, there's one position group I never worry about, and that's linebacker. Because, I mean, this is the team that brought you Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman. I know a whole different era. That's why they should go draft a guy, because you'll, you'll nail it. He'll nail, he'll nail it. it. And then here's the thing. Is I don't Graham believe and- in Devondre Campbell. No offense. I got to see this guy in the locker room. I'm sorry. You're older. Packers didn't want you. You said they didn't use you right. They used you the same way for three years. And you worked, you were good, and then you got older, you got hurt a bunch. Like, no. No. And there's there's two things. We know how these 49ers operate with their rookies. So we didn't see anything from Graham and Winters. And Winters, I believe, was injured. But what I saw from those guys last year, Winters has a ton of talent. He was all over the field in college. Jalen Graham was very encouraging in training camp preseason. So it would not surprise me, based on what the 49ers typically do with rookies, if we see a big jump from one of those guys this coming season and surpassing Flanagan Fowles. I could see Graham being that guy. I haven't seen enough from winners in the NFL to know, but he's very talented too. Graham is one of the guys I think we could see a big sophomore jump from, especially with um, Greenlaw being injured. I just think the Niners take that weak side linebacker position very seriously. They once gave Quan Alexander a whole lot of money to play that position. They once drafted Reuben Foster in round one, traded up for him to play that position. And um, they gave Dre Greenlaw a nice little extension to play that position. And now they got a Band-Aid, you know, a backup backup plan Band-Aid in Devondre Campbell. No offense. I've really gone hard after Devondre Campbell. I have no personal animus against this guy. I'm sorry, Devondre. <laughs> yeah. So they've done that. It's not their first choice or second choice. They take the position seriously. I wouldn't be surprised if they round one, two, or three. One of those, one of those spots, they take a linebacker. I would, round three would be great. Take it with a comp pick. Yeah, I believe it was his name. Someone in the chat says Cedric is his first name. That Cedric Gray guy is good. I I could see him being a pick for the 49ers. He seems to be available. I think in the third round, he's been available for the 49ers in most mock drafts. So yeah, I agree. I would not be surprised if they. They get a linebacker. I could see them getting a defensive tackle and a linebacker. And I think we're going to talk about the O-line later, but I think Mm -hmm. the 49ers fans need to prepare themselves for the 49ers taking best player available. And maybe that's what they should do. Maybe that's the smart thing. Maybe that's what fans want them to do. But I know there's a big segment of this fan base that wants them to go off after offensive line, and I'm not so sure that's what's going to happen. Hey, whoever replaces Dre Greenlaw this year, if it's Campbell, Winners, Graham, whoever, you have to be the most violent player on the defense. They You're not them. just a linebacker. You are like the heart of the defense. You're the you're the most intimidating player. You set the tone, all those cliches. It's a really specific role that Dre Greenlaw has, and Fred Warner is the coverage guy. He's the yeah. guy that's really making it tough for your passing game, but the guy who's, you know, delivering blows to the running backs and, and the check down options, like that's Greenlaw. And he's yeah. flying sideline to sideline. And one of the things that's cool about Greenlaw is he freak well not cool, but what you know about Greenlaw is he gets those fifteen yard penalties by the sideline. He's always in these really big collisions near the sideline. The question is like, oh, was it a late hit? Yeah, well he's there. He's not diving for ankles and stuff. He's in your ear hole. Pause. Yeah. But he's right <laughs> breathing down your neck. Yeah, and that's what that's you got to be. And if you can't do that, then you, they got to find that guy. I don't know if Campbell can move like that at this point in his career. He's the enforcer and the intimidator, and I, I think that's one reason I was so frustrated with them getting rid of Jimmy War because he was that guy as well. One guy who has kind of stepped up into that role, even though he's a DB, would be Diamondor Lenore. He's He plays like that. But you're right. 
49ers can't have and Fred's amazing, man. I mean, Fred's amazing, but he's not that dude where it's like I'm he's not a punisher. He's not gonna make guys think twice. Um that was Greenlaw's role. And that's important. The team needs to have that. They need to have that edge and whoever fills Greenlaw's shoes, which big shoes to fill, um, they need to take on that role. Do you know the timeline for Dre Greenlaw? No. I don't think they do. I mean, it's an Achilles. So it's a wait and see thing. It could be, I have no idea what they're even projecting. So that, that'll be a question at the owners meetings next week. I'll be there in Orlando, flying across right. country to ask about Zach Wilson. And <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. well, the questions be at the owners meeting, Brandon Staley, Nick Sorensen, all the stuff we haven't talked about that they've done. Remember the question I wanted you to, uh, I, I, I suggested Eric Armstead. What? Why did Jed York stand? Oh yeah. Change? on winning the Super Bowl, why is it not the ultimate goal anymore? Like, I mean, why is it, why is the season still a success if you just went play in an NFC championship game? Because he said two different things. If you I'll remember have to that one. Phrase it in a way that's not super aggressive, but I think I can sure. do that. But I, can, yeah. I think I can do it. Yeah, I'm sure you can. I think I can do it. I think I can do it. I'm a pro. I can work this yeah, out. You're a professional. <laughs> All right, I got another question for you. Best edition of the off season for the 49ers so far? Best addition. I think it is. I think it's Jordan Elliott. Hmm. Why? That's what it is. Well, if you look at his numbers, they're very similar to Eric Armstead, and you're getting him two years, ten million dollars. That's a, it's bargain, Eric Armstead. If you get the same amount of production, but you get seventeen games, and he has been healthy consistently. He's had, um, I believe, he's missed like one or two games or something like that over the last four years. So it's Eric Armstead production, consistent health for half the price. That, to me, is the best acquisition for the 49ers as offseason. I like the Leonard Floyd acquisition. I've always thought he was a good player. Um, he's always done well against the Niners. He... Uh, it's just so much better than Chase Young. I think they really upgraded their defensive end spot. I like the Len I think it was a great, a good price. And I think like that's all the reason to not necessarily spend a first round pick on a defensive end. You could get Leonard Floyd at 31 for two years, 20 million. It's perfectly reasonable. He's still got gas in the tank. Like defensive ends are out there. He's a good one. I think that was the right way to approach the defensive end market. Him. You're right. I think that's an advantage over Chase Young. And actually, I th when I'm thinking of Malik Collins, actually, I'm sorry. I said Jordan mm -hmm. Elliott. Malik Collins is the guy who has similar numbers. Oh, okay. Armstead. Yeah. Um, I confused the two. I got to get these new guys' names down. But yeah, Malik Collins has similar numbers. They both had five sacks last year, right? Yes. And they both are all healthy. The one yeah. thing that's key about the guys they're bringing in, they're, for the most part, they, they're healthy. Guys that don't miss a lot of games, which is, a, which is big. Right, you guys want you you want guys that consistently show up. The best ability is availability, and these guys do that. And they put up similar numbers to Eric Armstead for a lot cheaper. So I think those the, the defensive tackles to replace Eric Armstead, I think, are good moves. But I agree with you, Leonard Floyd to me is an upgrade over Chase Young. And I'm curious about Yatira Gross Matos and what he can develop into. He's got a ton of talent. Yeah, I think the the way the Niners feel is like probably Malik Collins isn't as good as Eric Armstead. But the problem with Armstead is that you pay him so much money and he's going to miss games. And when he's out, your defensive line is compromised big time. So if you could just have someone who's not necessarily as good as Armstead in every way, but in the ballpark for a lot less money and he can stay on the field, then maybe over the course of a full season, you'll just be better off. Healthier, cheaper, cheaper same production. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of fans get caught. Probably up not the name. run defender Armstead is. Armstead's a hell of a run defender. I right. got to give him that. Yeah. But we're friends. That's, I'm always looking for a, a reason to, to, to praise Eric Armstead because he's done so much for me and so many nice things. Uh, yeah. Uh, Eric Armstead's a great guy, man. He, I think he's a little yeah. frustrated with me uh, as re recently. But uh, in general, man, I think it's the way they approach the offensive tackle to replace Eric Armstead. Makes sense. They're getting, I think a lot of 49er fans get caught up in the names 
especially guys that have been here for a long time. Eric Armstead was the longest tenure player for the 49ers. So to a lot of 49er fans, he's a staple in his organization. He's the great Eric Armstead, 6'8", huge defensive tackle, making the most on the team. For a lot of 49 fans, that translates into being the guy. But the reality is, statistically, it has not been that great recently. Has missed a ton of games, and they replaced him for cheaper and got the same production out of those guys. And he went and got a nice little contract with the Jags. But it's like, I wonder if he would have gotten that from anywhere else. I wonder if he knew that in his if he knew he had that in his back pocket. I mean, the guy who drafted him, who doesn't care at all about injuries, had cap space. Well, Uh-oh. yeah. Watch Goodbye, out. Goodbye, Eric. Then, <laughs> didn't the Jacksonville who did they what was the receiver that they overpaid last year? Christian Kirk. Yeah, Christian Kirk. They're just man. Good time. I'm glad they make dreams come true. Yeah. All right, give me the worst addition of the offseason for the 49ers so far. There's got to be the they, – they've made a bunch of additions. Someone has to be the worst. Doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad addition. So if you're watching at home and you're on the team and you're recently signed and we're going to name you, we apologize. We, we probably think might think you're good. Can I take the soft way out and, and worst move versus worst addition, or does it need to be addition? It needs to be addition. Mm-hmm. You got to right. go negative here. I got to go negative. Here. You got to. I could go first. Yeah, go first. Devondre Campbell. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry. I mean, maybe it's the best they could do, but Devondre Campbell, he, from all counts, was legitimately bad the last two years. Packers didn't want him. He's older. He's had his own injury issues. He played 11 games last year. I don't know that he makes them better. I mean, I guess if, if, Jalen Graham or D winners or someone else steps up and it doesn't matter, then fine. It's not a bad addition. But like, if this is the the answer at linebacker and he's a starting weak side linebacker. Yeah. I mean, it's hard for me to, to answer. I think I I hear your point and I think that could be the case. Um, But I'm looking at these guys, Leonard Floyd, you took gross Matos. I like both of them. Jordan Elliott. Yeah, me too. I think it's a good value for uh, me too. um, I could D tackles too. Yeah, Chase Lucas, Isaac, Edom, uh, the two DBs they got. Yeah, I'm I like cool them. With, I'm cool with that. So yeah. process of elimination, Devondre Campbell, I would agree with you. There's some moves. But you, they kind of get a pass, though, because he wasn't their first choice. And Eric yeah, Kendrick's back out. Again, I don't know. Devondre Campbell could come out and play fantastic for the 49ers. They do a good job with linebackers. So who knows? But if I had to pick one, which you're making me do, <laughs> out of six guys, or seven, that's probably the guy I would go with too. Yeah. Yeah. So he's supposed to upgrade the Oren Burke spot. Did he upgrade the Oren Burke spot? Maybe. A little bit, maybe. Maybe he did. I have them similar to where they're at, but that's also assuming Drake Greenlaw is going to come back and and participate and be healthy this season. But yeah, I mean, I could see Devondre. But again, I don't know necessarily if he's going to be bad. We got to kind of see how it plays out, but I like the other guys more. I'll put it that way. Yeah, I like the other moves more. There's some bad moves that they made that I don't like that I can speak on. Just please do. I don't like extending Hargrave. Restructuring. Restructuring. I don't like that at this point yeah. in his career. He's, what is he, 32? Yeah, about to be. He's older than like Armstead. I don't like kicking the can down the road. They've been doing that for a long time, and they just did it again. So that 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 move pissed me off. I also don't necessarily understand the Colton McKivitz, why that was necessary when he's already in contract for this coming year. That yeah. worries me a little bit because it means to me they're kind of complacent with where they're at. The it was kind of like a half in, half out move. Like, okay, you want to extend him, but for one year, seven million, like you're not, you're still not really invested in him. He's still a stopgap, but now you got him for two years instead of one. You like, did you like- do that so you could create some cap space? Like, I don't understand. I think what it was is they're worried that Colton McKivitz was going to have a decent year and he'd hit the free agent market and they wouldn't be able to afford him. So they were worried about losing Colton McKivitz is what I think it is. In what world is there a market? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, look at what McGlinchey got paid, though. And if Colton yeah, McKivitz... Yeah, McGlinchey was like a first-round pick who I think some people... Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I feel like people just... Liked him coming out of college and saw that he was on an offense that functioned and people thought he was part of the reason it functioned. But McKivitz, I mean, isn't yeah. every team trying to 
exploit him when they face the Niners? Am I wrong? I don't, I don't know, man. Tackles get paid a lot of money. I think it was fear. I think it was fear. They're like, well, if he comes out, if he starts for us, has a good season, we're not going to be able to afford him next year. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I think it's dumb. Happen. Sure. But, but, but I think it's dumb because, to me, they should be finding that uh, right tackle in the draft. I don't think Colton McKibbs is the answer. So, to me, it's like, if he goes somewhere else and What's makes a lot of money, that McKibbs will price himself off the team or play himself onto the bench. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Either could happen. But what if it, that's the thing? Is what happens if he plays himself onto the bench? If they draft the right tackle who surpasses McKibbs at some point this year, now they're paying him for really no reason. Yeah, and they don't like to do that. They like to spend as little money as possible on the offensive line because what do they do? Right. What are they? What are they, they don't even touch the ball. Oh, they protect yeah. the quarterback. What does he do? Right. We don't need a quarterback. All he all he has to do is hand off and execute the offense. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Sam Darnold could do it. That's the approach. Are we Ray talking Mallard. about the line? Are we talking about the line? Sorry, I went off on a tangent. Yeah. Sarcastic. Are, are we, do we have an line topic today or no? We do. It's next. Okay. So we'll save it for a second. We'll answer some super chats, which we haven't hit. Robert Tanya will be a great tight end too, says Matt McEwen. Dwelly, you know Dwelly's coming back. How you guys know it's coming. Dwelly's coming back. Can't wait. Dave Barclay is Ross Dwelly gone? Yes, but not for long. Sean says, I think if they pay BA and draft Barton, it's a signal that the offense will shift to him in a way that at Julio Jones was the focus in ATL. They can play him at guard this year and elevate the L. I think Barton, a lot of people are saying he needs to be a what? A center. Right? center. Play, you play guard and maybe he could play guard for a year. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. I, he comes up a lot on a lot of drafts. So Barton is a guy you should pay attention to in the draft. Cooley says it doesn't matter what the Niners do as long as Kyle Shanahan is the coach. They will never win. And you know this, Grant. And you know this. Grant. Man. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that. Here's the thing is like I I criticize Kyle Shanahan a lot, and I, I don't like how he, you know, doesn't take accountability. But he's a really good coach, and eventually, he's young. He's my age. He's forty-four years old. Eventually, if he stays competitive like this, would it surprise me if he wins the Super Bowl? No, I think it's. Is he a really good coach, or is he a really good offensive coach? I think he's like good at both. I think he's good at both. Now, is he great? I don't know. He's, he's not good under pressure. Like when they when, when things get tight, all of a sudden, he does some incredibly weird things. He's bad in so in, in crunch time sometimes in big games. Yep. That that part so far. But again, he's 44 years old. There's no I, I would not Kyle's gonna be coaching for a long time in, until he's probably 65, 70 years old. That's another 20, okay. 30 years of coaching for Kyle Shannon. My he's question gonna, is. Is he going to get a team that was better than the one he just had last year? That team last year, if they had won the Super Bowl, which they came close to doing, people were going to say that they were one of the best teams ever. Already yeah. getting compared to the 94 team and the 88 team. like, And he didn't win with it. Yeah. It's going to be tough this year. I think the circumstances have changed. The NFC is a lot better. The NFL is a lot better. The Chiefs are getting better. Eating some dead <laughs> cap. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough this year to, to, to run it back and, and expect to win a Super Bowl. Last year was that opportunity. That's why I was so disappointed and frustrated. And I'm not saying I was going to win a Super Bowl in the next one, two, three, four years. But I think at some point, he'll probably get one. Okay. Kenyon, I wish we could wager on this. Bet Let's US. Will Kyle Let's Shanahan ever win a Super Bowl? I would, take, I would bet no. No. And never, I would like never. redeem that in like 40 years when he finally retires. Be like, yeah. <laughs> With inflation, you could make yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. Kenyon Gim says, good morning to my buttered biscuits. That's Kenyon. an inside joke. Only the yeah. real OG viewers of Mondays with Ryan would know. Matt McEwen says, Matos equals a many hue 2.0, in my opinion. I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. They need some pass rush from him. Have you seen his story? Have you seen? Yes. Yes. Tragic. Tragic. Yeah. Kenyon Gim said, send Zach Wilson to Cabo. Don't bring him here. Make him a pool boy in Cabo at a resort permanently. <laughs> permanently. Sean says, uh, agreed with Ryan. Low man wins in football. Matt McEwen says, now I know why Fred blocked you, Ryan. LOL, JK. He blocked me too. I got blocked. You check block me? I just had another one. I, I don't like Armstead it. Armstead blocked me. Armstead blocked me this weekend. I, 
Look, man, I, the job that I that I do, or the way I look at it, and I know Grant does the same thing, and and not everyone with credentials does what Grant does, and that's why I got to take my hat up to Grant because balancing having credentials and being honest is tough, and a lot of guys don't do it, so I, it's tougher for Grant. Now, I don't have credentials; I don't have to worry. I can speak freely on my opinions, and the only thing that happens is I get blocked by Fred Warner. Do you I mean, it's the same thing that happens to me, like when like when Fred Warner's talking in the locker. What's this, that's what's so interesting about the world so fred warner blocks me on twitter okay i see him in the locker room i say hey fred he'll say hi he's doing a group interview i ask a question he'll answer it it's like we still yeah. do business it's still professional like we're not friends but i'm not there to be anyone's friend anyway but yeah. may maybe it's just that like i tweet something and fans will instantly at the player and they're just like i don't want to see this i don't need to see grant's negativity on twitter i'll see him in the locker room if he has something to say to me he can say it if i have something to say to him i can say it but i don't need to be bombarded with this stuff that's possible what it is dude the truth is i block a lot of people and yeah. it's because i protect my energy so yeah. i don't hold it against these guys when True. they block me like i understand why they, i understand why fred warner and armstead block me because i said things that aren't complimentary and, and it's probably annoying yeah. and you don't want to read it i get it i block yeah. people for the same sh stuff so i don't hold it against that being me. said i give nick bose ultimate credit because he blocked me before he got drafted by me by by the niners and he unblocked me like why yeah that's tight. George yeah. Kittle hasn't blocked me yet, although I've tried to trade him. I've been trying to trade George Kittle for years. <laughs> and I go in the locker room, I go, what's up, George? And I, I know he doesn't like me, but he works with me. He has a smile. He doesn't block me. So I appreciate that. Thanks, man. I think there's also people that actually pay attention to Twitter. And like, I read my stuff and maybe I shouldn't. And then there's people that don't, like, I'm not, they don't block you because they don't even read that crap anyway. True. You know what I'm saying? Right. True. Official BNA Music 88 says, uh, Debo blocked me too, two years ago. Debo. I still got Debo. Oh, Richard Sherman blocked me. Var Bowen. Colin Kaepernick. Damn. Yeah. Warren Sapp blocked me. Warren Sapp blocked oh, me. Fuck, because of the Warren Sharp thing. Yeah. I love that story. That was so, so dumb. That was the dumbest one. Like, <laughs> I just, I confused the two, and he blocked me for confusing the two. Official BNM Music 88 says, Correction, Sorensen doesn't have his work cut out for him. Staley does. Nick is being set up. At least Bosa won't sit out, Right. Right. Oh yeah, Bosa. Is he gonna like show up to training camp this year, or is he not do that anymore? I don't know. He'll be there. He's cool we'll with the media, so we there. won't call him out. We'll be a be there. That's the question. Uh, yeah, Matt McEwen, Armstead, Kinlaw, and Grant all going to Cabo. LOL. Yeah, the crew, the three of us. Sean okay. says Greenlaw will now come at a discount going forward. Yeah, we'll see what, what Greenlaw. That's a that's look at Achilles one is tough. That's a tough yeah. one. All right. <clears throat> Is there a discrepancy between how the 49ers view their offensive line and how maybe their fans view it? Yes, a big one. I mean, just from what I gather from doing my shows and talking to fans on Twitter and on YouTube, a majority of fans, I took a poll, and that the greatest need for the 49ers, according to the 49er fans that voted in the poll, is right tackle. Mm. That's not the case for the 49ers. 49ers came into this offseason like we, we got holes to fill. The offensive line was not included in that list of holes to fill. And you can see that because they haven't even tried to fill those holes. Now, there wasn't a lot of options out there. And they made – I expect them to draft one or two offensive linemen at least. But they don't look at it like a hole to fill. Defensive tackle, pass rush, um, free safety, uh, nickelback. Those are holes that they needed to fill. Linebacker, those are holes they needed to fill. They were all on defense for the 49ers. The 49ers, to me, look at their offensive line like, hey, we got to the Super Bowl with these guys. They are good enough, and we could run it back with them. And sure, they, they plan on and, – and how you knew that was because last year in the draft, zero offensive line drafted. Mm -hmm. right, now, this year they got, what, 10 draft picks, nine draft picks? 11. At this point? 11. I thought, I thought it went down to 10 because they traded one. Maybe it no? did. Well, either way, they got Oh, because they traded from Lee Collins. Yeah. So either way, they have enough draft picks, and I expect them to draft one or two offensive linemen. But I don't expect them to start, at least not week one. And I don't think they're looking at this draft like, we got to fix this offensive line. They don't look at it like that. And I fully expect the 49ers to go into this draft, drafting best player available. And that may not be an offensive lineman at 31. So I think fans need to kind of 
understand that. Like, and again, I think they're gonna draft one or two offensive line men. Um, but I don't necessarily think they're gonna start. They might be red shirt type guys. I just feel like the way they call their offense kind of indicates what they think of the right side of their offensive line. Like when it's time to run the ball, they run to the left. And when it's time to pass the ball, they often keep Kittle in the block. Like they know that Colton Kivitz can't hang one-on-one against the best pass rushes in the league. They know that when it's time to really run the ball, they got to go to the left. So if, if you're right, if you don't really have confidence in your right side to do anything well, like, what do you really think of your offensive line? Okay, it's good enough. You can work around it. But why not make it a strength? Why is, the, why is that the one position where you settle for good enough when, I mean, I think they've been doing it since they had McGlinchey, and maybe they're just in the habit of it. But you could actually have a right side of the offensive line that's good at something. It would change everything about your offense. The 49ers seem to believe that it's, and this goes throughout the entire offense. Every, every position on the offense is more about doing what I want you to do. Do can, can you execute what I'm asking you to do more so than it is about just being a beast, just being a dog and and then trying to get that the, the most out of that person. Yeah. And I think they see that McKivitt's like I don't expect them to draft a lineman and then have that person understand this offense to a level that satisfies Kyle Shannon to the point where they're going to replace McKivitt's week 1. I just mm-hmm. can't see that happening at all. This is going to be the same Offensive line starting Super Bowl is going to start week one, I believe. And they'll draft some people, but I think they're more like red shirt guys. It's just interesting to me that, like, the left side of their offensive line is, like, premium talent. You got top – Trent Williams was a top five pick in yeah. the NFL draft. Aaron Banks was a second-round pick. Okay, those are serious investments. Yeah. Brendel, undrafted free agent. Good player, but, you know, solid at best. Uh, right guard, you got – John Feliciano, Feliciano, who's a late pick, and Spencer Burford, who's a day three pick. And then at Colt McKivitz, you got a fifth round pick. Like, it worked out with Banks. It worked out with Trent Williams. You you don't want to make any. I mean, you got a good offensive line coach. Like, maybe if you give him a a little bit more of a talented player, you could do something. I I think they're traumatized by the Mike McGlinch experience, drafting him as high as they did and getting just the absolute mid sandwich. (laughs) <laughs> they might be, but to me, like when you look at this offense, the one thing they could do to improve it over everything else is finding a beast on the right side of the line, in my opinion. Somebody that can make, be a big difference maker to where you're, one, protecting Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy played really, really good last year with really bad protection. He did. CMC had a hell of a year running the ball a lot to the left side. Yeah. Not, not very well to the right side. He got, no. I think, yeah, I think he got a fourth of his rushing yards in the Super Bowl was to the right side. The other three fourths were and, to the left. And side. I feel like a lot of times they have success running to the right are runs that start off to the left and McCaffrey cuts back because yeah. the defense is expecting it because that's the only, I mean, you know what I mean? Like those yeah. are runs to the right, but I'm talking about what runs where the point of attack is to the right. Do you feel confident calling ever on, yes. on this team? None. You got the quarterback that can execute your offense exactly how you want it. You got all the weapons in place. If you find a dog on that right side of that line that can open up the run game there and protect your quarterback and your investment in Brock Purdy, that would be the biggest difference you could make with this team. But I just don't know if they do it. And that was the thing with McGlinchey. When he was young, before he had the injuries, you had to give him credit. He was a hell of a run blocker. I mean, they would spring very long runs around the right side. A lot of Mostert's longest runs in 2018, 19, 20 were to the right. Um, But he just never could pass block the way a top 10 pick should be able to pass block. But McKivitz isn't even particularly fast like young McGlinchey used to be. He he can't get out and lead block like, I don't know. To me, they could do a whole lot better. And not just from a run blocking perspective, but if they actually had a right tackle that didn't need a chip all the freaking time, imagine yeah. how much better Brock Purdy would be. I mean, imagine how much better Brent Ayuk would be. Here's the thing: is like, let me let me reference basketball. I'm a big basketball guy. I'm a big Warriors fan. I've been saying this for a while. Kavon Looney, I love him. Mm-hmm. He, he should be a backup. Mm-hmm. They need a they need a dude there. That would they make need, a difference. They need Andrew Bogut, Zaza Pachulia, that dude. 
Right. Same thing. They've been trying to replace Zaza. Zaza for years. Right. Colt McKivitz, great depth right. piece. Can play yeah. damn near every position on the team. Mm -hmm. But he should be a backup. He should not yeah. be your starting right tackle. Yeah. I feel the same way. It's like the same thing. Kavon Looney. Colt McKivitz is the Kavon Looney of the 49ers. Yeah, which is a compliment. Yeah. Kind of. I like Kavon Looney. He went to UCLA. Yeah. The coach says do not feed the animals. And that's just a, you know, a way to think about Twitter and life. That's true. Matt McEwen says, I've asked other CCs on Twitter, if the O-line is not as bad as fans think, then where do you rank them? Zero response is not the worst, but not far off it. PFF ranks it high, which is incredible to me. I think they're top, top 12, top 15 with Trent Williams, and without them, they're 20. Incredible. Yeah. Without, without Trent Williams? Yeah. Well, yeah. Because that's the thing about having one good side of your offensive line. There's a lot you can do running to the left. You know, defenses really have to overcommit to stop that. And once they do, you can cut back. But there's a lot more you could do if you had two good sides of your offensive line. Right. Yeah. There's Imagine a lot that. more you could do. It's just such a crazy concept. And it's like on defense, the Niners want zero limitations. They have to have everything great. you got to have the number one defense. But on offense, it's like, yeah, we're working right. We're <laughs> why why is the mentality i don't know I, I swear man if they would go get a dog at right tackle this offense would be even more dangerous crazy yeah. all right guys that's the show thanks for watching i'll be back in a few hours with larry see you guys then and until then have a good day thanks ryan mm -hmm.